five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Live from Harlem in New York. From the most infected city in the world, it is the Ramble with Alex Bennett. That's me, and I'll be here until tonight at midnight. Ladies and gentlemen, out to the coast, the left coast of the United States, as they say. Hey, it's Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hey, Alex. How are you doing? Good. I uh, I saw a uh, documentary last night that reminded me of you. It oh. was uh, about Bernard Gett. Yeah, I was watching on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. You have Netflix? I was up at my sister's. Oh. She has. <laughs> yeah, no, I watched it in my old apartment house. Is in it. Yeah, yeah, that's because yeah. I remember you told me he had your old apartment. Mm-hmm. In case people don't know the story, Bernard Getz was a subway shooter. He was the guy who went down the subway and suddenly decided that four black men were out to get him. And uh, I think wounded all four, didn't he? And he Wounded he, all four, and kind of uh, one was badly wounded. I think to this day he's in a wheelchair. Okay. Yeah. And uh, he went down and shot him. And uh, he, in some people's minds, he was a hero. In other people's minds, he was a racist, right? Right. And when I was living, I had moved out to California. And um, somebody called me up and said, hey, have you been seeing about this subway shooter? I said, yeah, I've been seeing about it. He said, did you just see the latest news? He said, what? They showed his apartment house. He said, it's your apartment house. I said, uh, oh, really? He says, yeah, it's in the paper and everything. He says, you you were apartment uh, 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 7i, weren't you, or something like that, all right? And I said, no. Uh, wait a minute. He, uh, I said, yes, that was our apartment. He says, well, that's the apartment he lives in now. <laughs> So apparently he went from our apartment down to the subway with his gun, shot these guys, and if I hadn't moved out, that kid might be walking today. <laughs> That's the way I always looked at it. That's, a, that's you know, the kind of fate that we get occasionally in, in situations like that. But, well, yeah. the amazing thing is that he, had, he later turned himself in. Other, they never would have gotten him. So right. that shows you how technology is. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. He turned him, he turned himself in, and uh, he uh, uh, um, then I think he went on trial. I didn't see the rest of it yet. Uh, don't he, he was he was acquitted. He was acquitted. Yeah. Now let me. Uh, I, I haven't seen the end of the documentary yet. Do they show him today at all? At the very end, they do, and he uh, he was acquitted. Then there was a civil suit. There was a huge judgment against him, but he had no money. Yeah. And at the end, they show him he's uh, just kind of sitting around an apartment. I guess he's got a pet squirrel. He's got a pet squirrel. Ser- seriously, yeah, and uh, <laughs> he seemed very happy. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I tried to get him on the show in San Francisco um, after all of that because he got to know Al Goldstein of Screw Magazine. They became friends. And I said to him, would you please ask Bernie if he'd like to talk to me? Because what I had heard was that he was a very good cook. And I wanted to get cooking hints from Bernard Getz. <laughs> and he went and asked Bernie, and Bernie said... No way. That guy left the apartment in, in a mess. <laughs> well, I didn't leave it a mess. My ex-wife did because I had moved. I'd been gone from there about three months before she left. Okay. Uh, but that was the, uh, that was the uh, sum total of it. So that was my entire, uh, my, my, I suppose with that coincidence, I can never win the publisher's clearinghouse sweepstakes now because you know, <laughs> never get it. All, all coincidences flown out the window, you know. 
But uh, that was amazing. He was he moved in when I moved out. He moved into my apartment. He he had been in another apartment in the building, and he wanted a larger apartment. And uh, what year did you move out? Oh God, I can't remember. I think nineteen end uh, nineteen seventy nine, nineteen eighty, somewhere around there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, this was it was quite a story, actually. Um, and I was wa- I watched half of it last night. I was going to watch the other half today, but now you've spoiled it for me. Well, it's still <laughs> worth watching. <laughs> I know. I'm only kidding because how can you spoil something that happened years ago? Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he was a real life uh, death wish guy. <laughs> yeah. Did you see who produced that show? Uh, no. George Clooney. Oh really? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's it. Uh, I guess he sold a series to Netflix, and it's called uh, "Tried uh, Tried in the Media." I think is what it's called. That's it. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, they have uh, Blagojevich is an example of one of them, and I can't remember a couple others that uh, um, I wanted to. Um, I wanted to. I, w- I want to see. Uh, not all of them. Some of them I don't even recognize as having been big stories, but I guess they were. Mm-hmm. But, but anyway, so that, that was my uh, that was my whole uh, deal with Bernard Getz, and so I found that very interesting and fascinating. Well, it's too bad you didn't get to interview him. Yeah, yeah well, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, and then in this documentary, I love seeing Al Sharpton in the in the day when he was like this big roly poly fat pig, mm-hmm. uh, and now he's a really skinny pig. So, uh, but he well, he went and lost a lot of weight. I mean, he's really skinny now. But back he then. He looks like the air has been let out of him. Exactly. That's exactly what it looks like. Not a healthy skinny. And left him with a sour, persimmon crunching look on his face. You know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, I, you know, amazing. Just amazing. So, how's everything out in California? I guess you guys are uh, are uh, getting back into the action, right? Uh, very slowly. Uh, the restaurant still can't go into restaurants here. Mm-hmm. The big news is that Elon Musk is threatening to uh, take his factory out of Fremont. Now, it, am I mistaken? But didn't he do something improper and they threw him out as the CEO of uh, of Tesla? No, he made some remarks that got the company into a little trouble, but he didn't get thrown out. But no, but supposedly he had to step down as CEO or something. No, he's still CEO. Oh, really? Well, and then he had to step down as something, president of the company or something like that. All I know is I wouldn't think he was in a position to be able to say, we're moving somewhere else. Yeah, I think he still has a whole ball of wax, so he's talking about moving to Arizona or Texas. and. Yeah, yeah. They're defying the state right now. The workers are in the factory yesterday and today, mm-hmm. but they haven't been arrested yet. Yeah, he'd probably drive to that new location, but he'd have to stop and recharge every 200 <laughs> miles. And probably that would take all night. I could never see the practicality of an all-electric automobile if I can't charge it in five minutes. You know? Yeah, so I guess there's quick chargers that'll do it in 30. Yeah. But uh, so, that, that, that's the real drawback. I mean, you go 200 miles, and then you got to stop, and hopefully you'll find a quick charger and do it in 30 minutes, but then you got to find something to do with that 30 minutes. I mean, Yeah, that's a long time to kill. And uh, then if there's a quick charger, there's probably going to be, you know, how many cars going to be lined up waiting to get on it. So. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and what's his, what does he use for batteries now? Originally, he was using Duracells, I think, all, all stuck together, was the original Tesla. But, I mean, I just, I, I, what I think I, I like is a hybrid. I like one where if you lose your electricity, okay, you've used it all up, you have some gas in a tank, just a little bit, to get mm-hmm. you... So far, so you also what happens if you run out of electricity and you're in the middle of a highway somewhere? You're screwed. I mean, so you're always looking at that gauge constantly, you know, and I mean, with fuel, 
uh, you know, once it hits empty, you know you got another couple of miles, right? Yeah, supposedly, yeah. Supposedly. Yeah, but I could, so I could never see, I, you know, I mean, I see how wonderful it is that it doesn't pollute the environment and stuff like that. But it just doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense to me when it comes to uh, uh, just um, um, the the um, ease of using it. Okay. Yeah, although there is, there is even some question about that, since you're charging them with uh, electricity that's coming from coal-powered plants in many cases. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so they are fast, though. There was a Tesla guy that got uh, busted in Michigan last week doing 180. Really? Yeah. Really? Does it use up more electricity if you go that fast? That those... uses more if you go real fast, or if you drive it, it's really cold. It uses more. Really? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah, well. So I mean, I just I I I I. I I I used to put on a lot of miles on a car in a week. I don't know about you. I do, uh, yeah. But I, you know, I, um, uh, I, I would take my car to the drugstore, which is two blocks away. You know, I mean, that's the way I was. And, uh, in fact, I had a girlfriend who thought I was cheating on her because she started checking the mileage on my car. That's <laughs> really paranoid. And she says, how did you do 800 miles last <laughs> month? <laughs> I said, easily, you know, she thought I was cheating on her by going to see somebody in L.A. I don't know, you know, uh, and, and I said, no, I said, I, that's the, I use that many miles in my car. And I knew how many miles I did in my car because the other thing that drove me nuts is I leased a car. And when you lease a car after like uh, uh, 30. Uh, 5,000 miles or something like that, you start paying yeah. by the mile. Oh, they like give you like, a, most are twelve to 15,000 a year. Yeah, yeah. And so if you have... 15, yeah, then they charge you like a dime a mile, which can add up. Yeah, and and you're going, well, I guess I can't use the car for the rest of the year because I've used up all the miles. <laughs> Park it for the rest that, of the year. That's why I had two cars. I had a, uh, um, you know, a, a Nissan 300, um, uh, and uh, I had a um, an Acura, and uh, the Acura was the the lease car, and I just, it drove me nuts. I what I would do is when I got to a certain amount of mileage, I started shifting over to the other car. Mm-hmm. But I mean, that used to drive me nuts. So. It, it, being limited to like a 200 mile stretch on a charge really would give me the willies. You know? Yeah, anytime where you're worried about looking at the odometer and yeah, seeing but, how much you got and left. And the hell, the hell with the uh, with the uh, uh, atmosphere. You know, the hell with the, with the ecology. I mean, what kind of car do you have, Bubs? I have a Camry. Uh huh. Yeah. And and how much gas does it? suck up it gets about 23 miles a gallon oh really that's pretty good for a camry yeah i thought you had like a big gto or something like that you know no i had uh, years ago i had a trans am that uh, sucked gas pretty good yeah how 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 did that do you remember that was about 18 miles on the highway yeah. probably 15 around town don't you love them when they suck gas huh huh <laughs> how about that you get that feeling life's good Life's good. Life, you tell have the cheap gas. You know, fuck the environment. I don't care how much gas I'm using. I don't mind how much pollution I'm throwing into the air. I know everybody's finding this disgusting of me, but... Well, I, we're, we're near the end, so we don't care. <laughs> I really don't care what kind of world I leave you because you didn't do anything to prevent me from leaving you in that kind of world, right? Yeah. You know, you kept uh, yelling and screaming about the EPA and things like that. So if I want to use gas that pollutes, fuck you, you know? I looked at, uh, always, I'm always looking at cars for sale. And Toyota had this car I'd never heard of called the Mirai or something, and it goes by hydrogen. And they had their really, the, they had three for sale here, and they said, we'll give you, in the, we'll give you $15,000 in Fuel credit for the first three years mm-hmm. runs right. on hydrogen. So uh, I, looked, uh, I started doing a little research, and yeah. uh, it sounded pretty good. Then there's there's 
in the entire Bay Area, there's three service stations that sell hydrogen. So yeah. <laughs> so that's a bit of a problem, too. <laughs> that's a bit of a drawback. Now, if, if you could extract that hydrogen from water, ah, now we got something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You'd think there'd be something coming along like that, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, we've run out of time once again, Larry Bubbles Brown. It goes so fast when you and I are just buzzing along yeah. like a... Yeah, and at my age, when I say we've run out of time, I mean... I'm <laughs> not kidding. Well, I'm not kidding. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown, thank you so much, thank Larry. You. Bye-bye. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And there we go. There's Larry Bubbles Brown. Here's me. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? Look, see how how pale I look? How wan I look? How terrible this kind of looks? I forgot to turn this on. I'm forgetting all kinds of things lately. Uh, and I think it's because of a lot of the medication I'm taking. I'm overdoing the medication, folks. That's what I'm doing. Hold on a second. I got to just find the... Uh, uh, here we go, here we go. Uh, we'll turn on. Boom. There we go. The lights are on now. See? See? See how beautiful I look? Okay. All right. Well, I think that uh, probably it would be very nice if we were to uh, maybe check in with uh, something that we uh, like to do every now and then. And let's see what's happening with our national illness. the map there's our uh, a map that we show you every night see what's happening in the world the current total let's look at the tote board let's look at uh, uh, the tote board i wish we had like a drum roll um four th- million four hundred thirty eight thousand three hundred seventy one cases confirmed around the world some of the countries are lying some of the countries are telling the truth uh, some of the ones are underestimated, I think, like the United States. I think we are underestimated in our, our number. Uh, total deaths worldwide has now topped 300,000. It's 302,115 people who were here about a month ago and are not here, or two months ago and are not here now on the face of the earth. Well... Let's think of it as thinning out the herd. Okay, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, the United States has, well, we're, we're getting towards 1.5 million, but we got 1,417,774 with the total deaths here. They always say global deaths up there, and it, uh, there's no reason for them to. Uh, it's 85,886. We're about ready to go to 86,000. Um not good. Not good when you look at the rest of the world. But uh, what, who's in second place now, oddly enough, is Russia. They say they have deaths of 300, uh, 2,305. Okay. Uh, total confirmed cases, two, 252,245. Do you believe that number? I mean, Russia's a pretty big country. Look. It's the largest landmass in the world, okay? You could put 
Uh, let's see here. I would say one, two, three, four, four United States in Russia. Okay. You, here's China down in here. And China, you could put maybe about six Chinas in Russia. And they don't have as much as, uh, well, I just don't get it. China's all the way down here now. Look at that. China's all the way down here. And how many they have? How many deaths they have? They had, oh, let's see here. Come here. Give me this. There we go. Uh, they say 84,029 confirmed a total. And uh, the global deaths, uh, the deaths for them, 4,637. They tend to stem the tide because they, uh, and look at them, they're, they're right down here. You can see they've flattened out, but they are not going down. That's their problem. They're not going down. Uh, I'm trying to find South Korea here. South Korea is starting to have a problem. Again, okay, oh, well, I don't see South Korea. Uh, uh, they're not, I'm sure they're not down that far. Oh well. Anyway, uh, that's uh, that's uh, you know that's our current uh, look at the uh, map. Okay, so that gives you a, a kind of an idea of where we're at worldwide. Oh man, I today have been having the allergies from hell, and I don't know why because it's lower today than it has been, but. You never know because sometimes there's there are certain uh, like uh, uh, factors that go into it, certain kind of things like the elms are up or the junipers or whatever, and that's the one you're allergic to. Well, whatever I'm allergic to today, my eyes have been burning, nose has been dripping. Uh, I don't have a temperature, so it's not the nasty COVID. I have a 98, let's say I just tested myself, 98.4, uh, and sometimes it's down around 98, so... Uh, I don't think I have the dreaded COVID. Uh, let me turn this uh, fan down. It's giving me too much of a chill. Uh, and I guess, I don't know, I have not that much to talk to you about today. So uh, let's say we, uh, we open up the uh, Skype lines. Hold on a second. There are, they aren't open yet, folks. You know, I, as I say, I don't turn them on until I'm ready to go on um, uh, because it's a... a it's a real problem because some people start calling anyway. So let me see here. Okay. All right. Okay. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Uh, one of these nights I may do the show uh, using um, Zoom uh, just, just for the convenience of a lot of people. See how many people we get. Okay. Uh, as a result of that. Oh, oh wow. Ready. And uh, there's Charlie Wallace, ladies and gentlemen. I'll bet the next guy to call is going to be Brian Neary. I'll just bet you. Um, let's see here. Uh, Brian Neary is second. Uh, he's in there today. Uh, let's see here. Let me see. There was Charlie and Brian. Brian Neary. Yeah, yeah. There they go. Oh, and look, he's showing us. Uh, he's showing. <laughs> You really have to make you feel bad for not being there, don't you? <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful in Texas too. Well, yeah, but you can't. You don't have a window to shoot out, right? No, I have right on Facebook. Oh, uh, all right. Well, Texas is beautiful. It's it's uh, lovely and adorable. Uh, hello, Brian. Here comes uh, here comes uh, Jeff. Jeff was in the third pl uh, second place last night. Let's see if he comes up in that spot now. There he is. So already we're there. Here comes Phil Meyer. Uh, Phil was in, uh, I think he was in the, um, let's Seven. see here. He, way, he, way back there. No, was he yeah. way back there? Oh, oh, no, no, no. He was in fifth place last night. Rob Alfano, I think. Did he, Rob call last night? No. Or did he? Uh, maybe he did. Uh, but no, let me put him, not. let me put him in the fourth place here. Come on, Rob Alfano. There we go. I'm glad you guys all call in pretty much your same spots. Then I don't have to work too hard in getting all this to uh, to uh, work, you know. Boy, are my eyes burning today. Boy, have I been sniffling. 
it, it, it's, uh, it's, and it's getting to be, finally getting to be spring around here. I think tomorrow it's supposed to be in the uh, high 70s, maybe, uh, yeah. Jeff? Yeah. We're yes. already at 90 degree weather here. Hmm. Well, that's, that's winter in Texas. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, I, look, I mean, I lived in I lived in Houston, and that was the most humid city I've ever lived in in my life until I came to New York. New York is pretty damn humid, um, and I can never figure out why. I mean, you would think, hey, it's the East Coast, you know, East. You think uh, cool weather? Uh, uh-uh, uh, man, we get right. Am I right, Jeff? Lots of ocean. Lots of ocean. Yeah, that's it. And- and you're in Manhattan, you're right in the middle of water. Well, also in Manhattan, we got one other factor going, and that is just a hellish amount of, uh, let me see here. I bet they, uh, yep, yep, there Kevin comes right up in his spot from last night. So everybody's in the spot they were in last night. Nobody move. <laughs> you know. Uh, but, man, I'm telling you, my eyes are just, right now they're burning like crazy. You know. And, you know, uh, hmm? What I remember about New York, and I, I left there, I was 18, uh, was the bugs. It was humid. There were bugs. It was cold as, as anything in the winter. It was like Siberia. You, your skin felt like leather. I do you, couldn't do you know this, this winter, and I think Jeff will agree with me on this, this winter was pretty mild. Yes. You know, I mean, we... we, we our, the cold weather stayed around longer than usual, but it wasn't that cold. I don't think we. I don't think. I think. I. I think we only went under thirty-two a couple of times during the winter. Yeah. You know. Wow. Nobody yeah. ever went uh, skiing. Yeah. Yeah. What was, what was the song? Was it by the Trogs or a Hot Town Summer in the City? No, that was Love and Spoonful. Yeah, yeah. And that yeah. song always sounded like what it felt in New York City on a hot day. That yeah. da-dum, da-dum. Yeah. very oppressive, very oppressive. Yeah. And plus, you got all the all the you know the concrete, and so the heat radiates off the concrete. It's like you're a piece of bacon on a griddle. Yeah, you know. So t- 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 <laughs> the junkies. Yeah. What were you? Well, well, you're talking about. When you were what, uh, sixteen or so, yeah. didn't have much air conditioning then. No. Uh, you know, uh, I, we had air conditioners in our house. They were the window air conditioners, and uh, the cars were air conditioned that uh, my father had. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you know, but you're right. Air conditioning wasn't as prevalent. We used to go to the theater. Uh, you know, the uh, the, yeah. the theater that was air conditioned that was a, that was a big deal you know, i didn't i right. didn't come up with uh, air conditioning until i moved to houston texas i don't think i ever had an air conditioned anything well, you don't need it in san fran it, it, yeah, yeah but he was in marin and uh you know uh, when you were growing up right? no when i was growing up i was in marin yeah partially and i was in san francisco for 11 years of my life well, you don't, you don't, well, the 11 years was later, you know, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the, uh, San Francisco, you don't need air conditioning. And Marin, it, there's a few days a year that it'd be nice, but you don't really need it. No, you didn't really need it. And um, San Francisco, I called San Francisco, I once described it as the world's only air conditioned city. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it, there's a certain cool quality about the the air in San Francisco with the coming in off the ocean and so on that you just you know there's areas because of the cool and the warm meeting each other that yeah. there's fog uh, 320 days a year yeah, yeah. right and yeah, you see a lot of fog come over the Santa Cruz Mountains because yeah just because of the cool weather up there and on the weekends if we know it's going to be hot we'll take off just over the hill and it's yeah you right up to the top and it's very very cool and like foggy and then you go back down the side it's really nice yeah. yeah well i have these lights you know that i use on the show and boy they feel just oppressively hot uh, uh, bright tonight uh, let me... well, they're leds huh? right what they're leds you can turn them down they're right? leds i can turn them down you only turn them down a little bit i you know i turned them up to kind of Get them right today for some reason. Oh, here comes Tony again. Tony had trouble getting in. 
Let's see here. He'll pop in now. He should pop in. There he is. There he is. He's drinking his coffee. What, did you have trouble? Yeah, it kind of popped out. Yeah, yeah. Really? We'll just shove it back in. <laughs> well, I'm going to go get my beverage. <laughs> what, you didn't think to get your beverage before the show? You couldn't do that no, for I us? was uh, you know, listening in the background and, and looking at some reviews for something I bought a while ago and never, ever used, and now I know why, because nobody ever uses them. <laughs> and, oh, what, and so, what was that? What was that? Uh, this, this thing, the Arsenal, it's a... Uh, uh, it's it's a unit that goes on top of your camera, and it's uh, mm -hmm. supposed to do like HDR and eliminate shake uh, for, and make extremely sharp photos. But yeah. you have to use it in conjunction with an iPhone. It's a real pain in the ass, and oh. I've never used it. I see. Okay. So looking, I said, you know, I wonder, I wonder what everybody else thinks about this piece of shit. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna go get yourself. I'm trying to. Uh, excuse me, I'm trying to do something here, folks. Mm. There we go. Okay. I, I, you know, it's it's horrible having to do everything here. I, I wish I had somebody that did some of the stuff, but I have to do every bit of the... Uh... Are you still there, Tony? He's frozen again. What yeah. happened to Tony? He disappears. Either that or he went into a trance. It, it could be. It could be. Um, uh, the wallpaper hypnotized. The wallpaper hypnotized. Hip hypnotized him. Hypnotized. Hypnotized. Uh, <laughs> oh, here he comes again. There he is. <laughs> well, I, I hope you'll I hope you'll stick around this time, Tony. I keep freezing. I, I, really? No, I mean I kind of pop off. I kind of maybe I'm getting disconnected. I don't know. Maybe there maybe. you go again. You're oh well. No, no, Am you're I not frozen. No, you're you're okay so far. So far, let's all wait for him. Here, here's the exciting part about doing a show like this. Let's wait for him to, you know. Today I did a, uh, I was, uh, I did a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a Zoom with uh, Marjorie and Albert. Um, because Albert never used Zoom, and I said to him, it's really simple. And I finally subscribed to it, so at four, fourteen ninety nine a month. So hey, Alex. I, yeah? How do how do you, I heard you say that you were thinking about doing Zoom here? The only way I know how to do Zoom is if you send out an invite. So how could you say, all right, the lines are open, call now on Zoom? Go over. I'll put it. I'll post uh, the uh, link on my uh, Facebook page. So that's the only way. People have to go to a Facebook page and click click uh, a link. Click on the link. Click on the link, and immediately, even if you don't have Zoom installed okay. on your machine. Right, right. But you still have to have a place because there's no way you can just say like you can with GabNet. I mean, with Skype, call us at GabNet. Well, I could on the screen. Well, yeah, I could yeah. on the screen okay. put the uh, put the address, but it's kind of a, it's kind of a wonky address. So uh, rather than have people do that, I could just say well, go over to my Facebook page and just click on the uh, on the link I have posted there. And then they can try. I mean, I thought I'd do it maybe for one night and just see how it works, you know. Okay, so and, you're tired of hitting yourself over the head, and now you want to do this. Well, no, no actually, i got to tell you, uh, the one that uh, they've done a good thing with Zoom. I mean, I wish Skype were this good, okay? To begin with, the picture looks phenomenal, all right? That's for starters. The sound is phenomenal. And the ease of use is ridiculous. I could take, uh, you know, if my mother was still alive, I could probably teach her how to do it, okay? It's that simple. Um, I, but however, the reason I wouldn't use it on the show on a constant basis is look how this looks, folks. I have, uh, I have all these uh, people there, and they're all in their individual places, and I have the background, I have the GabNet logo there. I have a live picture of myself, which is not coming off of Skype. It's coming off a of camera, and it all looks really good. In fact, I watched this blown up last night uh, on on uh, my TV set, and it was looking just absolutely gorgeous because now I'm sending this thing out in 1080p as well. So um, it looks great. Zoom, however, is very easy to use, so it would be interesting to see how many people would call who don't normally call. 
And of course, with my, the thing I just set up, I, I can actually have up to 100 people at a time. <laughs> oh, shit. Boy, would that be a clusterfuck, huh? Zoom. Who, huh? who, who owns Zoom? I, I uh, think Zoom owns Zoom. Oh, okay. So it's not a Microsoft product. No, but, I don't think it's any no. company like that. Yeah. Now, you've used Zoom, haven't you, uh, Rob, on some of yeah, your... Yeah, sub- my company provides a, sus- a subscription. Yeah, and it works pretty well, right? Yeah, I use it uh, fairly frequently. I like it. It's very good but when I, you have a group of people like we have the, tenants, the Tenants Association. We're going to have a meeting you, uh, on Sunday. If you post that link, well, I guess it's like here. No, it's not, because if you... Well, I don't know. It's, if you post that link, then any nut job... Mm-hmm. Could join, but I also with the same here. with the with the uh, <laughs> nineteen uh, uh, with the uh, fourteen ninety five a month, I can go to a page and set up everything I want to. I can say, don't let anybody come on unless I approve them. Mm. So if I see somebody I don't want or who's been a problem, I just don't approve them. I don't yeah, uh, they admit go to them. A waiting room or something. Don't they, they go? You, you first you oh, make them go to the waiting room. I can do oh, yeah. away with that waiting room today with Albert and Marjorie. I did away with the waiting room, and they just called. They were there before I even signed on. That's another option. Yes, that's well, another option. You have all kinds. You have uh, you have a whole. You have yeah. tons of options. Yeah, the people you don't approve, I guess, are the ones that are on uh, the chat uh, on this thing. You know, or or the people that are, you know, crazy are the ones that are on the chat. <laughs> What do you mean crazy? I don't get what you're saying. You know, uh, uh, you said that if you don't want somebody on this, uh, you can go into the waiting room. Well, on this, you know, you got those guys on the chat that uh, are kind of, you know. It's true. There's no chat on Zoom. There is a chat on Zoom, actually. There's a chat for inside the room. Yeah, they got one on the side. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because it won't be on yeah. Facebook. However, uh, there's another advantage, and I can turn that on or, or off, and that is, let's say I'm on you, with you on Zoom and all of you guys, but I only want to send a chat to Rob. Yeah. I can do that. Yep. So, yep. Um, uh, or I can send a chat to everybody. Right. So I mean, there are, there are certain there are a lot of advantages to it. The disadvantage is is that in doing a show like this, they have yet to create a situation where I can take the individual pictures and modify them and put them up here like I have them here, right? So that's so OBS doesn't work with Zoom, huh? OBS does not work with Zoom. Uh, it it works, but it works very strangely. Okay. Um, uh, it, it, uh, uh, it, it, yeah, OBS works with Zoom, but I've got to tell Zoom that I want the, uh, it, it to display the, what was the term that's used here? Uh, display, uh, the, uh, the, uh, window capture. Okay. So that window, which is the Zoom, I can then put up, but I have to put the whole thing up. I, you know, and everybody would be there. Um, and I, you know, I and it's it's it, it, it the whole thing works pretty well. I mean, it it it, it can be done. It's a <laughs> little it's a little more wonky, a little more wonky in that respect. In other words, I can't do what I do here, and this looks really good, and nice, and you know, um, uh, and I'm I imagine I imagine there is some program out there or something that the Zoom people do for the networks so they can isolate pictures and so on. I, I just I think that's probably available somewhere. But yes. prob- they also have a whole menu of things you can subscribe to, and some of them cost upwards to 500 bucks. And maybe what they do is they charge the networks extra money to be able to pull out a certain picture and put it on the screen and da 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 and have more... More of a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, more, control. huh? Control. Control, yeah. So, you know, I don't know. I may try it some night. I, either that or I might just do it on Facebook. Um, Wait, Alex, hmm? I know you did that on that one Saturday. I was driving that I heard it, but how did you do it at that time? I did that on the other machine here, which 
for some reason on the PC, the picture doesn't, uh, the window, I can't get the window to come up. It just comes up white. But I can say, uh, let me do the display, and then I cut off most of the display and just show that. Okay. Wait, did you send it? Did you send an invite out to everybody? No, I, I actually on my Facebook page I put the address. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, you know, and the address never changes. I have my address, and that's it. You know. So, and I can change that, of course, if I want to. The yeah. hackers were pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, we had hackers. We had what they call what, what they call them uh, Zoom bombs. Zoom yeah. bombs. Yeah. And I and I can do away with that too because all I have to do is I just say do not put up share you know a, a share thing where you can share your screen, and that's what they were doing. They were just bombing me by sharing their screen. <laughs> These were unknown callers. Oh yes, yeah, these were unknown oh, callers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love you, Alex, and then the next thing I see is this giant penis in a giant vagina. Yeah. Boing, boing, boing. Yeah. 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 You couldn't monetize. And it's called Zoom bombing. Yeah, this this uh, one she's like she's like a a sister to me growing up, but she is a real estate person and she was on the news because she had a Zoom and she had like ten people and yeah, Pornhub came on there and all this stuff and the news, well they blurred it, but so they, they, they had a story about that, but it, it was pretty funny. It's right when everyone started doing Zoom again. Yeah. Really hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, you know, it, it, it's something for me to look at. I, I, I really have to kind of stick with Skype. But Skype is harder for the average person to, to use, you know. Uh, yeah, I can give out our Skype address, which is uh, um, GabNet Live. And uh, all you have to do is pump that in there and come to us. But there's a lot. It's just... It's not as as much. It's not as easy as just clicking on a link, and there you are. You're uh, I don't see why it's so difficult. I mean, you just what? get the app. Uh, you uh, you uh, you type in the address. Uh, and, that, no, to you it seems simple. That's almost too more complicated already than this is. All I do is send out an, a note to somebody and say, yeah. "Here, zoom me," and they click on the link, and the next thing you know, I'm talking to them. Yeah, my company yeah, that's all you had to do. crazy thing like a web route or something like yeah. that. I mean, you don't even have to. You don't even have to download Zoom in no, order. No, I didn't even have Zoom. Yeah, I just clicked on your link. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I have uh, this thing that uh, we use for our internal stuff at uh, at the uh, uh, you know when I have calls, and uh, it, it's like web route or, or something like that. It, I think it's an Adobe connector. And uh, you uh, have to dial up a phone number, you have to click on a link, and then you have to put in a meeting code, and then uh, a meeting number, and then you're, you're on the thing, and then you can share your camera and your audio. Well, the reason why I subscribed to it was I found that when I did something with, uh, when I, with Pearl yesterday, he had to put in a password. And I can bypass that if I pay fourteen ninety nine a month, so that the caller doesn't have to put in a password. So it makes it even easier. Okay, so yeah. that's you know that's the that, that's how that situation works. Oh boy, I'm just tired tonight. I don't know why. Hmm. I'm just not feeling a hundred percent. I don't think I have the COVID. Uh, I, because I'm you not, know, I'm not, I'm not be, coughing, but my eyes are burning and I'm not. It having, could be allergies. It is allergies. Are yeah, your allergies yeah. bothering you? Actually, no. Oh, then I shut the fuck up. It's what? Just, and I got mess. I mean, I'm scared. Yeah, of <laughs> How about you, Jeff? Do you have allergies? No. Oh, okay. Uh, there's nobody in the New York area anymore. Yeah. But my allergies do get bad. You know what I notice, Alex? When they start cutting the grass, <laughs> I need, it mm -hmm. bothers me. Really? They have grass they in Queens? Them. Yeah, it really it annoys me. What yeah. do they cut the grass with? Manit? No, I mean they have like a they have like people the guy who you mean Manitol, Phil. Whenever they cut it. it, it so you don't even know what you cut your coke with, you know? <laughs> and that's <laughs> coke you cut with, not. Really? <laughs> that's the joke. <laughs> oh really? No, it's not the joke. You didn't know what you cut coke oh, with. I do, okay. having it's been a. It's baby powder, right? Yeah, basically, yeah, and you shit your brains out. Yeah, 
Yeah. Baby laxative, yeah. 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 Well, I, I've heard of people cutting coke with manit. Not manit. There's no such thing as manit. No? <laughs> I thought it was baby powder. Maybe you're thinking of a soccer player, Manute Bowl. You know. No, no there's no such it's called it's <laughs> called Manitol. <laughs> Manitol, yeah. Was that basketball? Nah, basketball. <laughs> See, that's yeah. how much I know sports. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we gave you a pass. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, my eyes just feel burning tonight, just like crazy. And I have this, uh, I have various things I put in the, in there to make them feel better, but they, yeah, they're just, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mess today for some reason. Um, you ever but, use Pat a Day? What? Drop? Pat a Day drops? No. Yeah, they're expensive, but they work. Really? Yeah. Once yeah. a day. Well, I have some stuff here. Let me see. I what is Clorox it? might work. This, yeah. It, oh. it cleans like a white tornado. It, this is Zapador. Let me see. Oh, Zapador, yeah. My wife used that. Yeah, this is... Uh, uh, there we go. And supposedly it'll take some of the burning out of the eyes. I could use some of that myself. Oh, hold on a second. Oh. That's crap when I wear contacts. Huh? Uh, it's not something that when I wear contacts, they, they come in little... Uh, little capsules, and you you break the capsule open. So one time it's called start. it's called poppers. Yeah, it looks like poppers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um, the, so what's what's happening in the news today? You know, uh, is Trump been keeping his mouth shut lately? He's been Hell awfully no. hmm? nice. Good job. Oh, what did he do something today? He's up against. I watched Fauci. Uh, what's his name Bright on season. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he did a hell of a job. Threw stuff on the sword. Oh, what do you do? What what do you do? What's the new thing? Oh, he spilled his guts. Yeah. We should have known about this in what January first. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Who who are we? T he went after somebody, right? Today. Bright. The Sound? whistleblower. Oh. Dr. Oh, Doctor Bright. Oh, Bright. Oh, of course, Bright. Yeah. 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 He uh, he basically said fire. Remember, we're gonna be in for the worst. Winter we got coming up, he thinks, if yeah. things don't get changed. But if things don't change. Yeah. I mean, we can. They're not going to change. No, they're not going to change. They're not going to change. Because he says we're so far behind. and yeah, I, I don't get it. You know, the way, that, thinking... the way that whole thing went, I watched it from 9 o'clock on out here, which was you know noon to there, I guess. But it, uh, it was interesting to watch because as the questioning went on, more and more and more of the right side of the aisle left. And there was yeah. no, no more Republicans asking questions. They just yeah. left. Well, that was, you know, that's kind of stupid. I mean, if you're yeah, going to... Because if you, they, were getting, they were getting buried. Social they distance. Had, they had nothing to, they had nothing to ask <laughs> Social <them because> distance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were, they were doing that. That's for damn sure. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but it was interesting to watch because, you know... He he kept bringing up all the things that he was bringing up in early January, yeah, and mid late January, and and basically saying, you know, we're in deep shit, you know, it's coming, and nobody really listened. Well, you know what got me today, uh, and it, it, it gets me a bit about a couple of these companies. The one I'm really down on now is MSNBC, and I'm going to tell you why. Uh, uh, because today, for instance, good example, this guy Bright is giving his testimony. His testimony, most Americans, I think, wanted to hear. Even if you were a Republican, you wanted to hear what he had to say, right? At noon, they break into him so Andrea Mitchell can do her show. What? And I go over to CNN, they've got him on for another hour. But no, Andrea Mitchell's got to do her little show. And I think it's Andrea Mitchell sitting there bitching. I don't know why we get this guy off. I want to get on the air. I didn't even no, go there. I went to see She doesn't Spam. control the... That's an executive, a news executive at NBC that makes that decision. Well, she can boy, that control. was a terrible decision. It was. Uh, that ha if that happened, that was terrible. I but mean, it, it, went on, it went on for another hour. Okay. They just wanted to get to commercials or something, you know. Well, yeah. Andrea Mitchell's husband's unemployed. 
Yeah, he, he, he he's on the he's taking uh, he's taking uh, 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 what do you call it unemployment. Uh, unemployment. Yeah. They're getting uh, an impact they get unemployment. So. All the way for this one. Yeah. So anyway, you know, I mean, I just uh, I I that just that pissed me off. That really pissed me off. And what pisses me off too is every day I wait for Cuomo to start his little thing. And they don't get to it when he starts. And at the very beginning is when he gives all the numbers and the statistics, which is all I really care about, okay? Uh, and uh, they didn't go to him, I think, today. They didn't go to him until uh, after he had gotten Dana. well into all those statistics. Meanwhile, you know what I found I do now? Because they all get out of Cuomo when he starts going to the question and answer period. Because they all want to do their advertising, right? Yeah, that's what it is. They kind of so I go over to CBSN, which has a New York channel, okay? And I put that on. And, of course, they're happy to carry it all the way through on CBSN New York. Nice. So I just watch it from there. But, I mean, it's just... The way these knuckleheads handle this stuff, like, oh, yeah, we're going to run all these governors and stuff. Oh, wait a minute. We need to run commercials. Goodbye, governor. You know? Uh, and and uh, I just think in a time like this, you've got you've to supply people with all the news that's available. I even think that if Trump runs one of his nitwit um, press conferences, you cover those, too. You know, at least for our amusement. You know? Yeah. But uh, I, I mean, what's with this? With this? Uh, uh, yes, Jeff. Sometimes we look, we try to find it for the government governor, and, yeah. and we put it on Fox. They cover it often on Fox. They put it on Fox News Channel. Yeah. Really? really? Okay. You think it'd be on C-SPAN or something? It is it on C-SPAN. It is sometimes. On sometimes, no, sometimes no, not no, all the time. No, one, two, three. You know, not all the time, no. but CBS, if you have, you know, cable, the, uh, the cable app, it. if you need the, if you have the app, you have the internet, CBSN, the app and go and it's CBSN, New York. It has make them New York, LA, Chicago, Minneapolis. Uh, uh, Is they that have a subscription. No, no. It's free. It's free. Uh, I, when I first cut the cable uh, or cut the, uh, you know, yeah, the cable, uh, I used to watch CBSN uh, all the time, and then uh, uh, I ended up getting the Yahoo TV now, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, gives me all the news channels. But uh, yeah, but the fact is, all I'm saying is these news channels are not reliable, at least especially with the Cuomo thing. I mean, I'm, I'm interested more in Cuomo than watching the New Jersey governor or the, you know, the mini uh, Minnesota governor or whatever. Uh, uh, and uh, I want to see it from beginning to end. And the only place I can get it from beginning to end, even not even C-SPAN, uh, because some days they don't carry Cuomo's, uh, but uh, they do on CBSN, CBSN New York. Yeah. Hmm. And sometimes that's duplicated on their main CBSN feed as well. Is that the one with Dutier and Anne-Marie Green, uh, the, the two commentators? I don't think you know. It seems like they've changed their format. You know, before they used to have uh, they used to have anchors, yeah. And they don't seem to be having those anchors anymore. At least I don't see them. They do have anchors on the local news, you know, on the CBSN New York, CBSN LA, CBSN San Francisco, um, or it's called CBSN Bay Area, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they do all have their own individual. Um, Anchors, because I thought uh, 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 Dutier, I, I forgot his first name, and Anne Marie Green were in New York. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't. I don't know who these hosts are. I, you know, I, I just watch it for, uh, for for Cuomo. I know that bothers the hell out of you, Phil, but I will. I watch it for <laughs> hey, Cuomo. Hey, you want to wait for Trump watching Cuomo uh, uh, bloviate? Uh, then go right ahead. He's not bloviating. Hey, it's just a little shiny. How, how many here have seen Cuomo? I've Would anybody seen. describe that as bloviating? No. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. No, I didn't ask you, Phil. I'm. I'm replying. You already said how you felt about it. You any of you anything. guys think he's bloviating? Or you think he's just giving out with facts? Facts. And when he does give out with his opinion on the screen, it says my opinion. 
<laughs> That's like it does it's under everything he says. What? Which is under everything. Oh, he it's says. under everything he says. Like how many people died yesterday? I don't think he needs to put in my opinion. <laughs> Eventual mime that says that uh, you know something about uh, Cuomo is, is just talking to hear himself talk. You know. The, yeah, I know you're you're repeating you what mean you Trump read. Do that. Somebody. No. Yeah. Oh no. Well, no. Just okay. the facts, ma'am. Yeah. Trump yeah. doesn't talk. I'll tell you something. Talk. I'll tell you. I love it when he says stuff like, you know, I've seen great things with that, but you know, who knows? Maybe it'll disappear. Maybe it won't. And he just keeps on rambling, Don't saying nothing. The little, thing we'll that, the little thing that says it's, it's Trump's opinion. Uh, or, he never says anything but the opinion. He doesn't ever have a fact. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about it. You know, he it's never opinion. has a fact. He never has anybody brief him. And he, he if unless he reads it on a teleprompter, which then he yeah. sounds like a grade school person reading a, a report. Today on my vacation, I did this <laughs> yeah. because he doesn't like reading from a prompter. Well, I got I got to say that he did uh, get on Obama about using a teleprompter. And, uh, you know, yeah, and that, he, but so, no, but he uses a teleprompter. It was so a like nice crazy today to see Mitch McConnell walk back his his comments about the Obama administration not leaving a plan for a pandemic to the uh, to the uh, Trump administration because they did. Just, uh, they didn't leave anything. Oh yes, they did, and he had to walk it back today. I thought they uh, diminished. Uh, <laughs> what? What's that? I thought they diminished all the PP. E stocks uh, 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 in 2008 and never replenished them. Uh, uh, that's what. Uh, that's, that's what. what you, that's what you heard. Where'd you hear it? Oh, you know where I hear it. Well, but so so that's the case. If that's the case, that was 12 years ago. Yeah, I mean, right. So they've had 12 years, only three under Trump. That so if uh, Trump was so Trump had three about years it, to replenish them. Yeah, well, yeah. so something. why didn't he do something not about like it he, if he saw it was like a terrible thing? The pandemic happened six months into his first term. I mean, why did he, why did he, why did he, pull, why did he pull back uh, funding of the CDC? He didn't pull back, oh, the, the CDC funding? I think it was yeah. because of that bad information. Uh, and they also... Oh oh, 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 I see. The CDC has bad information. And Trump has good information? <laughs> Yeah, what Dr. Fauci has bad doctor? information what? too. At that uh, let's time, see. Where, where did where did where did Trump get his doctorate from? I loved yesterday when he said, "I disagree with Dr. Fauci. I, yeah, he's ro really he's wrong. I disagree with him." Wait a minute. What 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 university did you get a, a degree in medicine that qualifies you to disagree with Dr. Fauci? Yeah. If they ask who Darwin was, he draw a blank. <laughs> who? Who? Darwin, who's that? David X. Trippy would know what's going Al on. Ryan? Darwin uh, was evolution it, theory. Who? <laughs> Tony. Invite him to the White House. We'll have lunch. <laughs> yeah. He's been dead for a long time, Trump. So we the program. <laughs> Tom, uh, Brian, uh, is there any truth to the I, in fact that uh, what they're saying is that the tests originally had to be bought? Through the either the CDC, the World Health Organization, and uh, and you couldn't get a test from anyone else, and then Trump had to open it up to where other companies could produce these uh, these COVID tests. No, and, the, and the the companies, the the hospitals, medical facilities, even nursing homes, those are the ones that have our platform. So mm -hmm. we have an instrument that can only hold our cartridge. Right. Because our cartridge is very different from all the other all the other products out there. We have our own system inside that does all the mixing, all the chemical mixing internally in that small cartridge. No, I, I know that, but uh, 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 he just answered your question, Phil. He said no. He said no. Whatever companies had our systems got to use our systems with those tests. Right. But your systems at the time that the virus came out, your systems were for other purposes. Uh, right. DNA testing and so sure. forth. So therefore, uh, when the, we first experienced the virus, this virus, uh, there were tests uh, that were only uh, available through the either the World Health Organization or the CDC. I don't no, I don't know. No, you're getting another nod. No. 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 We we started <laughs> no, shipping. And I, actually, I asked that question to one one of my friends that worked there. They uh -huh. said that they delivered to the hot spots first because everything that we track for weeks of supply for even flu for everything 
That was off the chart. What, what, Phil, what Phil's so asking, what Phil's asking, and he's going to keep asking until he gets the answer he wants <laughs> to hear, uh, is is uh, th weren't these tests supplied by the World Health Organization and by no. the CDC? And the answer yeah. is no. Uh, okay, because I thought that the Trump administration had to open up uh, testing to private companies uh, after the tests were found to be defective that uh, were distributed by the World Health Organization. And no, that's they awesome. weren't defective. No, no, no. It was our tests that were defective. Okay, I thought that was why we were so far behind. The WHO no. offered and us tests that Trump turned down. Right. Trump refused them, and those tests worked. And yeah. what... Right. February 10th is when we were notified by, I don't know if it's CDC or if it's the uh, BARDA. BARDA is the one that we talk with. And so BARDA came to us on February 10th, and that's when we started doing everything for, for that. So. Oh, okay. And what uh, Bright said today was that there, the problem with the testing was that there were so many different tests because of the scramble. Yeah. That they just started pulling out, oh, you give me a machine, you give me a machine, you give me a machine. And there were so many different tests that they were trying to figure out which ones were good. And they're still trying to figure that out. They're still trying to figure out whether they need an antibody test, whether they need a, uh, a region, uh, the kind of test that you're doing, the actual you know, COVID test, the antibody, the before or after test, the during test. Right now, that's their problem is there's so many different tests they don't know which one is best they're just trying to get tests out and that's yeah, what just, what bright was saying that yeah. you know if he if they had jumped on this early they would have had tests and in in addition to that they knew about remdesivir in january yeah. and they already knew that that was already a possibility of being a good drug and they could have been producing it in january and had a, a better grip on it but Mr. Trump and the group there decided that they wanted the, the chloroquine to go through first, and they pushed that. Wasn't and the, they kicked wasn't back here. on the remdesivir, and that's why they're behind on that. Wasn't the remdesivir a thousand dollars a pill, and the uh, uh, it, it doesn't the, matter. It works. Nine cents. It you works. Just, These aren't pills, Phil. It and, isn't and a not pill. the economists. The scientists were saying that this is going to be a better. It'll stop a lot more. Of this stuff, get you know, a lot, it'll save a lot more lives. Than to, uh, yeah, uh, wait a minute, hold on a second. Was da more dangerous, uh, and he uh, wanted to release uh, it, uh, Brian, without having, without having a doctor's um, looking over it. He wanted to just cut it loose over the counter, uh, and not have a doctor's watching over it. Um, uh, uh, Brian, am I correct? The remdesivir is not a pill. It's a it's, it's a intravenous drug, right? Yeah. I believe it's intravenous, yeah. yeah and it, 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 it limits from when somebody is sick, they would give it to somebody, and from 15 days, they would bring that down to 11 days. Correct. Uh, uh, therapy. He's hospitalized. So. Which is good for the hospitalizations if they can clear them out there quick. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And it would, pe it would slow people from dying as well. Yeah. yeah. And, and being on, on ventilators, respirators. So the deaths would be less. Hey, yeah. Brian, can I ask Brian a question? Yeah. Brian. If that's that's another thing. If they would have more tests, then it seems like the key is you got to test these people early, so that if they do have it, we can treat them earlier, so that you can cure them. You have less death. This is where Trump fucked up. We don't have any test kits. That's exactly what, you, what he was saying today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it hit everything. I mean, in the end of January, I got a call from my group when I was still running all the manufacturing, and they were short on masks. And then all of a sudden we're short on booties, the disposable stuff. And mm -hmm. then we we've been hoard when that we've been hoarding, but we've been trying to use them multiple times and doing some crazy stuff. And that's when everything started hitting again with all the PPE. Then we started having problems with with uh, our Italian supplier for the swabs, uh, COVID, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's uh, our, our uh, Copan is the company over in Italy that builds those, and we're having shortages there. So we just yeah. I just came. From so this week, my big project is our new facility in Lodi, and then we also just bought a building about two, about two, three weeks ago. We just signed, actually, one week ago, mm -hmm. for a facility in Newark, near Fremont, in East Bay, and that's going to do all 
flu and COVID. So oh, we're going to ask you about the carpet. <laughs> that oh, is. no, he's trying to, he's trying to get this. And if now, you watch the whole... Imagine he gets that job, Phil. That's big money. <laughs> if you watch the whole hearing after Bright, they had Bowden. Mm-hmm. And he was a, he's a mask manufacturer in Texas. And he's a ma- manufacturer in Texas that makes masks in America. And we mm-hmm. were we have screwed ourselves over the years. And he's been screaming since 2006 yeah. about why aren't we buying our masks in America? We've yeah. been buying them in China. And here we are amidst a pandemic. Him and Bright have been working together trying to get the government to buy masks in America because one day there's going to be a pandemic and we're not going to be able to get our mask. Well, look yeah. where we are now. What's yeah, that? We're trying to buy them from China and we can't. And this guy's got four lines yeah. that he can't activate because now they want the government to just flip the switch and turn it on. He says, screw you. I'm not going to turn it on and then have you turn it off again. What's that uh, company in Allentown, Pennsylvania that Trump went to either today or Who yesterday? Who gives a shit? You know, that has no, 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 nothing they, to do with it. They make the, a billion masks right now. Yeah. Uh, a billion? A billion masks, Phil? Yeah, that's, that's what they said. Yeah, no, not a billion a mask masks. Too, and everybody else wore a mask. But, but now it's too late. And what Kevin is saying, I remember, I just saw that the guy was interviewed like 2016 or something, right? He, he no, in 2006, him. he's been screaming about this ever since. Yeah. And he's been trying to work the government to, to, to help, you know, try and build up a stock of these masks. He's got the ability to do it, but he couldn't get anybody to do it. Yeah. So and in, here they are, this, so in all this fairness, many years later, and now, hello. And, and Phil, We're I haven't heard China. anything about a number of a billion masks. Okay. Not a billion. I I heard them talking about it. Have, have any of you heard about a billion masks? No. 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 no, that sounds like a crazy uh, number. Okay. Sounds like Trump. Leaders, no, uh, Phil, uh, you can look it up all you want. You're not going to find a billion masks. Billion? Uh, there's, uh, yeah. A billion a month? Wearing a mask. A but billion a week. Pennsylvania mass distribution. Uh, let's see if I can f- uh, find out how many masks were uh, produced. Well, it can't be a billion. That's a lot. Maybe Three. Maybe <laughs> Three. Um, Nobody goes home. The Phil, home Phil has got to, if Phil can't stand to be wrong. Yeah, he, they're he they're not making a billion right. masks, Phil. We don't need a billion this masks. Guy, this guy they're was a Republican, him, that big of a and he voted for Trump. <laughs> and he still right. said, "Yeah, I, I tried. I tried. And I, you know, I tried until I couldn't speak yeah. anymore. And the government didn't listen. Even Trump didn't listen. And here's another thing, Brian. Like, you know, it doesn't make sense with Trump. The whole month of February is just blank. What did they accomplish in that month? Yeah, Nothing. I mean, we're, Nothing. We're busy. We're busy on the assay, you know. But then, even when we have the assay, six weeks later, which was a record for us, you know, with the help of the FDA yeah. stuff. But then they can't snap their fingers and you know get you know we're doing like about forty, fifty thousand. We still FDA would do forty thousand wow. a day. Jeff had his hand up. Jeff. Yeah. I have uh, two things. Uh, one is where I live, there's probably, I think, 350 families that live in the same place. Okay. And they're going to offer to have these tests done for free, anyone who wants it. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's good. It should be for free. And the question is, is it, is it a good idea for me to do it? Or am I really taking it away from somebody who really needs it? Yeah. If you feel like you want it. Somebody says here that Trump today called Dr. Bright, called Dr. Bright a disgruntled employee. That's what Trump called him. Yeah. And my (laughs) argument is... Don't some employees have the right to be disgruntled? Disgruntled, yeah. You know, it's not like being a disgruntled employee is necessarily unnecessarily disgruntled. When you're ignored and yeah. you're the expert and you're being yeah. ignored, yeah. very easy to be disgruntled. I mean, I wish I wish Trump would have the dignity to just not get into these little cat fights. Nah, you know? uh, not true. Take all the way back to you know Rosie O'Donnell and and Bill Maher and all of all these little petty bullshit things that the man has no ability to let go of. It's his personality. It's a flaw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you think I, he's liked by anybody other than no. his kid? 
I found as kids them. like. And uh, 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 I may have interpreted it incorrectly. It says, yeah, Trump, no shit. Trump said, guided by our team, workers Trump like said. you distributed over one billion pieces of protective gear to places in need. So this, they were just part of the one billion pieces of gear that were uh, done. But I heard his speech, and I heard the the one billion, and uh, yeah, you never. It's like you hear everything, Phil. Yeah, well, uh, so anyway, that was the... It, it gets uh, filtered through the sieve in your brain that then filters out all the stuff that's necessary. Yes, Jeff. The like one the thing that really irritates me about Trump is he always creates that but by tomorrow you're going to have $7 billion yeah. and everybody will have all you need. Right. And you, there's, there's no problems. Well, right. And, Very and soon. at the same time, he's okay. See, he's lying. No kidding. But you know what? People are dying because they yeah. killed yeah. that stuff. That's a good point. And, and you know what? I th I think you ought to go to prison for killing people. Eighty thousand Americans dead. Here, 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 look. Here's my argument. Here's my argument. Whether you're pro-Trump or anti-Trump, the fact is he's president of the United States, and mm -hmm. all this happened on his watch. And apparently he wasn't watching close enough. You know, I mean, this is stuff that happened on his watch. These deaths are on him. If anybody, if anybody else were president, they would also say it was on them, that the buck stops there, okay? And, and that's all. His job, his job number one as a president is to protect the American public, and he failed in that mission. Here he is. The guy's name is uh, Michael Bowen of Prestige Meritech. I'm a lifelong Republican, and I'm yep. completely embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Phil's not paying you, attention to that. <laughs> when you heard Bright today, also I heard the beginning. I heard the beginning of Bright when I was going to work, and and uh, man, he talks. He does not sound like a like a disgruntled play. He talks very very calm and very specific to the facts. Yeah. He would even yeah. ask like sort of the questions you could tell as a Republican coming up, and I little twisted a little bit. He would go back to that the same the same tone and the same specific details about everything. So so good, well spoken. Well, how how yeah yeah. Well, how mad must you be if for years you've been you know warning people, <clears throat> and it's been falling on deaf ears. You know, I mean, yeah. his the deaf yeah. ears went all the way back to the Obama administration too. Although yeah. Obama got word that a pandemic might happen, and so he formed a committee to look yeah, at well, it, I, you know. And, and that's and that's what bright, bright, that's what his dream is to be there on the front line when a pandemic comes up. He has been preparing this for all his life. The Ebola stuff came up, and they tackled some of these easy ones. When this came up, he was the kind of person you want in that position. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But you but know, I mean. Him. Well, the fact hey, was... Can I ask a question? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do you think if Trump would have came out after this, like, he's not humble. He's always trying to make it like it's this person's fault, it's that person's fault. Say if he would have came out and said, listen, I should have did more. I'm not blaming everybody. Not that the shelf was half empty. It's like he can... If he was a little more humble and took some of the... Listen, I made a mistake. I should have been more proactive. But this is when... He's, he's too busy always trying to nail somebody else. He's not humble. Yeah, but that wouldn't be Trump. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he, he, it's, 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 that, he no, can't do it. That's you know? his he, can't, he can't. Even meet. when people die, he can't do it. He's done nothing. That's not his personality. It's amazing. You know, I mean, he's been. Uh, I think he, he believed you become president, and that's the easiest job in America. You know, you just come to work right. every day. You just wave the flag. Yeah, listen to the experts that you put around you, and not fire everyone that well, you don't that, agree with. That's why every president including FDR and all the ones who really were really on the smart side, have always had a cabinet because you don't know everything about everything. So you get yourself a guy who's an expert on the on financials and you get somebody who's an expert on this and an expert on health and an expert on that, and then you defer to them. Ultimately, as the president, given all this advice, you have to make a decision based on that advice, but there's nothing wrong with saying... Hey, I listen to what other people have to say. And this president apparently thinks he knows it all. He, uh, he you know, 
Um, uh, and and it's it's um, I, I know more. What do you say? I know more about South Korea than anybody. Yeah. Well, yeah. how about a South oh, Korean? He tells he tells reporters he know <laughs> no, they, no. he knows more about themselves than him than those reporters. He says I know more about you than you do. Yeah. You know, what is Phil looking at? <laughs> What's he doing? He's unwrapping ammo. I think he's getting his gun ready. Oh, no. <laughs> he's not interested in having a discussion here because he can't win. Oh, uh, oh, I see. Uh, oh, you, well, you, can't yeah. win. you can't win this because... He's ready to go to mission. You, yeah. you could be a supporter <laughs> of this guy, but you have to point out when he fucks up. Rob, I never went on this show. All I do is kind of try to keep you in check. But, you know, uh, this is just a standard group of people... Uh, sniping at the president mm. instead of supporting him and and helping uh, and doing something to get things done. You sit around and you snipe. And he's and, doing the wrong thing. He's doing the wrong I thing. Support him doing the wrong thing. No, uh, uh, he's not doing the wrong thing. You guys don't have an answer. For well, no. Swat. You wait a minute. Hold on a second, Phil. 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 You're the. You're the. You, which you're accusing us us of. You also could be accused of because you stand up for this guy no matter what he does. Right. Doesn't matter what he does. You know, it uh, I, I, doesn't matter what he does as long as he's doing uh, what he said he would do and he's doing it. Well, he's, he's yes. doing anything that he said he would do. He said he was going to protect In the middle us. of a pandemic, which I, I get what you're saying, Phil, when it comes to he told you that he was going to do something and he's doing it, right? right? But now we're in the middle of a pandemic and a pandemic did not come up at all in the elections and he has bumbled it. Every step of the way, and even I, even I, this, even like Dr. Fauci now, he's distanced himself from him. He he's disagreeing with the scientist. He's he's saying that you have to open up the economy, and you know what? I uh, the states that have opened up are not having higher death rates. Bullshit is Whoa. having higher. Death rates. Hey, what, what, what about Georgia, time, Phil? Paul, yeah, it takes time. Is, is, is not having that Georgia position. is having a big spike in yes. in in illness and in deaths. So don't say that it's not true, Phil. Well, what is true is instead of being supportive of of the elected president. Oh, of the United oh States, okay. I will support him. Oh I will support him. Okay. I from here on in, I'm supporting everything blindly, he does. Blindly. And Just I can blindly. be an idiot. God bless America. God bless Donald you know, Trump. And it, and while I'm lying there on a fucking respirator, fighting for my life, I will say, you know, Trump was right. Eighty thousand people, a, Americans are dead. Phil, eighty thousand 80, people. people. If if Ob if that had happened under Obama, you would be oh, here oh, eviscerating be him. Under Obama, a hundred thousand were dead. They went ape shit over four people in Benghazi. <laughs> yeah, they, oh, Benghazi. Yeah, they yeah. nailed. That. What about uh, uh, was it forget. SARS or H one N one that happened, that happened here? And how many? That was only twelve thousand. No, not twelve thousand. I think there was a hundred thousand. No, it wasn't, Phil. Oh, Look it up, Phil. Close. No, it not wasn't. Maybe uh, worldwide. Maybe worldwide, but not in the United States. Twelve thousand was the most, and that was eight one. The United States died under your governor's watch, and it's because he uh, put COVID patients back in. No, he put recovering patients. COVID patients, Phil, not. Yeah. COVID patients. No, recovering COVID patients. People and, who were on the mend. And why did we have so many deaths in uh, because in because homes? that was the nature of those of those of those nursing homes and, and the fact that everybody was living quote close quarters and what the problem was was a lot of a lot of people who worked in those nursing homes coming in with the COVID, and once they came in with the COVID, it spread like wildfire. The NBC article with the words that... No, it, you read a different set of words because what it said there was who he returned to those, uh, those nursing homes were recovered COVID patients who had come from those nursing homes. Said that they... Recovered. Must. Recovered was the word in there, Phil. You didn't read that word... Yeah, I didn't see. There was no recovered in there. I there sent it back to you. I sent you back those very words in a, in a in a uh, uh, in a messenger to you on Facebook. I actually took those quotes out and and showed them to you where it said recovered, 
And there was another thing. Let me see here if I can go back to your, uh, because you, you keep sending me the shit, and I really can't stand it. But, uh, you know, um, let me see here. Hold on a second. Uh, Phil Meyer. Nurse, uh, we're still mandated to take recovering patients, and we can't say for sure whether the virus is spread because of patients transferred under the state mandate. Omar said, uh, but it's certainly not helping uh, the situation. Uh, uh, oh, asked you. Wait a minute, oh, wait a minute. It says the nursing home is still mandated to take in recovering hospital patients. We can't say for sure whether the virus was spread because of the patients transferred under the state mandate, uh, according to them, but it's certainly not helping the situation, was what the quote okay. was. Uh, and, and then they also, before that, said... Uh, uh, I, I don't know if I had that other one, but it, 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 it referred to it as um, uh, oh, I, uh, recovering. The nursing home is still mandated to take in recovering hospital patients. Yeah, the NBC thing I sent you says... Uh, that was from the NBC thing you sent me, Phil. Yeah, New York nursing home forced to take COVID-19 patients. Uh, let's see the rest of it. Uh Recovering. Uh, if you read down further, Phil, it says recovering. I'm not. Look, I, we got too little time to we, go into the fact that you you need a new pair of glasses. Uh, if they're recovering, they still had COVID. No, if they're recovering, they're not. Uh, they are not. They, they did not send back people who were uh, infectious. What was right. infectious? And hey, hey, what? What are you saying, we, Brian? We have we have one person. We have two people at our company that had COVID. And one is just coming back this week because she's recovering from not walking, from being bedridden. You know, she doesn't have the virus anymore, but she hasn't walked in like three or four weeks. You know, so that's the recovering part. Just trying to get the body back going again. Doesn't yeah. necessarily have to have the virus. And they felt that the that the nursing home could handle the recovering patient uh, better than they could having them stick sticking in the hospital. Okay, yeah. but you know, um, to my. 100- Eight-year-old New Jersey woman recovered from COVID-19. Well, and there's a chance for me if I get it. So did an 84 and a 92-year-old. Yeah, yeah, that was a hundred-year-old patient. 108. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy, man. You didn't look a day over 107. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it certainly is. Uh, you know. But, but it, you know, it's it's. Uh, I I happen to think Cuomo's doing one hell of a job here, and uh, he certainly has saved a lot of lives by his actions. Yes. And uh, Not Trump and, sure. and and Trump can't say that for himself. Right. Yeah. Doesn't change his mind every other day. Walk things back. He's been a weak president in this kind of situation, which was the very situation we were afraid he couldn't handle, but we were hoping right. that he could. We were hoping it wouldn't happen. Well, yeah, we were hoping a war wouldn't break out. Nothing that's, would happen. That's what I thought it was going to be an international thing. And nobody but more than myself and no more, m- m- nobody more than the panel that's uh, here tonight would like to see him doing a good job because our lives depend upon it, Phil. Yeah. So Dumb. anyway, there's the theme. Oh, boy, we can get out of here. I can go take my temperature again because I'm paranoid. Uh, anyway. Uh, hey, listen, Brian, thank you for calling. You, Jeff, you, Charlie, you, uh, uh, Rob, always good to have you around. Uh, Phil, uh, God damn you. Uh, <laughs> Kevin, thank you, and thank you to Tony. And uh, all of you, I would say it would be nice if you gave a big wave goodbye. And what I'll do is the audience will wave back, and I will wave back at you as well. There we go, folks. There they go. There's our citizen panel for tonight. Let me just... Uh, hang up on them unceremoniously here so we can get the uh, the lines ready for the next show which is jack bishop he's going to be here with the intersection uh and uh then uh, he'll be uh, discussing uh, all matter of things just like we have been and we'll continue to do so uh for another hour right after we get off here in the meantime after we get off here no, whatever. anyway we'll see you again Uh, tomorrow okay same time same station in life and in the meantime as always if you see her tell her i love her okay bye bye